Looking at the last two tools on the toolbox that we're going to explore, these are the scroll bar and the spin button, we find two fairly useful tools for allowing the user to cycle through set values, because you can set the bottom and the top values for both the scroll bar and the spin button. Let's see them in action by using our form template. So using the form template file, we have our sample little form ready. Now the scroll bar is this icon here, and you can either have a horizontal or a vertical scroll bar. So let's put a horizontal and a vertical, just to demonstrate the difference. A spin control is this little option here, spin button. Now we can click and drag. You can see that viewing the form as it stands, we get horizontal scrolls that allow you to scroll across, and a vertical scroll that allows you to scroll across, and a spin control that goes up and down. However, nothing appears to be changing anywhere because we're not actually seeing the changing values. So it's not just enough just to add the items to our form. Let's click cancel. We need to set the properties. So we use our horizontal first. Now, like all objects, it gets a name, and we have scroll bar one, and I'm going to reduce that to SBH for horizontal. And we do the same for the vertical. Let's call that SBV for the vertical. And we'll call our spin control instead of spin button one, I'm going to call it spin A. Obviously, anything without spaces is great for your control names. Now, our scroll bar takes a minimum value and a maximum value. So that's the value of where you are on the line when you scroll across, at what point you stop. And we can go all the way from 0 to 327.67. That's probably a little high for our example. Let's go to 360, which is the number of degrees in a circle. For an example, we can set the large change value and the small change value. That's further down in the properties. The small change is what happens when you click on a button. So it'll go one value in either direction, depending if you click left or right. And the large change is when you click in the gap between the elevator bar, this bit here, and the next scroll. So between there and there, or when this is over here, between there and there. So let's make the large change 20. Let's go 25. So it's obvious what's happening. So those are the main bits that you would set. The large change and the small change, the min and the max values. Now if we set the value, then that's where it will be at the start when the form loads and the value will change as you scroll the bars. So it'd be quite useful if we could see the values. So let's go back to our form and add a label. Let's put a little label here. And we'll call that SBH label. So I know that that's the label for the horizontal. Now what we need to do is tell the scroll bar when it changes to update this with its value. So if we double click the scroll bar, you'll find the default action is underscore change. So every time SBH changes, we could change what the label displays. So my label was called SBH label, and it's the caption that I'm after changing. I like it when it appears in the drop list because you know that you've typed the name of the object correctly. So the caption is actually going to be equal to current value of SBH, so SBH.value. So back at the form, let's see that in action. So as this scrolls, you see it goes up one by one by one by one, so that's a small change value. If I click here, it goes in a big change value, which was 25, if you remember rightly. So it jumps by 25 each time, or goes down by 25 each time. Right at the beginning is zero, so that's the minimum value. Right at the other end is 360. So any point between there and there, we can capture the value and then do something with it. So you could use this to ask people questions rather than just saying type a number in this box. They can trendily use a scroll bar like this one, and then we can pick the value of the point they stop at and then do something with it. And the same applies to the vertical scroll bar. So let's add a caption for there. So we need a little label. Let's put that down here. And we'll call that SBV label. And while we're at it, with the spin control, let's add a label for there. And call that spin label. And then we can set the properties 
for each of these. So I want, when this changes, at the moment its default is to go from 0 to 32767. Let's make this one go to 1000, with a large change being 100, and a small change being 10. And then we need to set our label. So let's double click the vertical scroll. So we've got SBV underscore change. So when the scroll bar vertical changes, I want the SBV label dot caption to become equal to the SBV dot value. So effectively where you've stopped. Back to our form. And our spin button is pretty much the same. It also has a min and a max. Notice that the defaults are different. It doesn't go all the way to 32657. It goes from 0 to 100. So let's change that to 1,000. Small change is 1. So that's every time you click on the up or the down arrow of these buttons here, it will go up or down by one value. Now, if the range is from 0 to 1,000, that's going to take quite a while. I'm going to change that to 25. And again, we can pick up the value. So we can set a default, which is where it will be to start with, or we can pick that up and place it in this label here. So let's double click our spin. And again, we've got spin A underscore change. And what I want to do is spin a label dot caption. And it's not called spin a label. Let's go back to our form. The label's called spin label. And let's keep our same naming convention, spin a label. So spin a label. You know that if you get nothing when you press dot, that the VBA is not seen that as an object. So that's a big giveaway. You've typed something wrong. So spin a label dot caption is going to be equal to spin a dot value. Back to our form and let's see both of those two new bars in action. So we know the top one works, jumps large and small. The vertical one, we can see that that also works. What you've got to bear in mind though is that going down goes up in value and going up goes down in value, which is not perhaps what you normally expect when you're in elevator mode like that. The spin does work correctly though. Down will go down, up will go up. So you can see it's going up in 25s, coming down in 25s. One thing you can't do with a spin control is jump right to the end, which you can do with a scroll bar. So each of the two choices has its advantages. This way you can only go up and down one at a time. Using the scroll, you can drag to a set point and drag back. Or you can go right to the end or right to the beginning, which you cannot do with this spin. You have to keep clicking until effectively you get to the end and keep clicking until you get right back to the beginning, whatever you've set as the min max values. So they're both very similar types of controls, the spin and the scroll. They take min and max values and you can capture the value at any point and use that in your code. So we could collect wherever it's at using the OK button, which is where we put all our actions and then carry out some execution within our VBA.